All right, Henry, I, I gotta, I gotta give you some bad news. Yeah. We're about to hit an hour. All righty. We're about to hit running time here. So we'll go ahead and pick it up real quick. The Klingons end up entering the war, and another one of the little things that we see is Starbase 324, which is cap- commanded by Admiral Owen Paris, who is the father of, of course, Tom Paris from Voyager. And, uh, who used to go by the name of Nick Lacarno. Yeah, who used to go by Nick Lacarno before he got bounced out for doing inappropriate things in a shuttle. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Earth, President Baco, who is president of the Federation in the novel continuity, started in a novel called The Articles of the Federation. Okay. Uh, calls in a civilian council, the chief most civilian council on the Borg, Seven of Nine, to help generate a defense plan for the entirety of the Federation and barring that a survival plan. Uh, back in the Beta Quadrant, Titan is following up on the anomalies that they've found, with the evidences leaning strongly against the Borg, despite all of the signals that they've found being very close matches. They follow this trail and end up at a star that is coated with a Dyson sphere. So, very advanced technology going on here. The sensors are reading everything either off the charts or not at all. And it's a complete mystery of what's going on over here. Until two aliens end up popping aboard the ship and are escorted by Captain Erica Hernandez, who is in Alpha Cannon as well as Beta Cannon, the captain of the NX-class starship Columbia. And she's certainly not looking 200 years old. Okay. So that's how that tied back over to there. In the Gamma Quadrant, the Aventine ends up finishing up what they can of their investigation, bringing back their away teams, and discovers that whatever was murking people on the planet has now come to the ship, with of several crew members receiving injuries and or fatalities. They order a ship-wide search to try and find out what's going on, and just as about they're getting done with that, we end up seeing a runabout bust through the shuttle bay doors and fly off. And instead of destroying it, Dax orders a pursuit course. They follow this ship into what appears to be some kind of rift in subspace and poof, completely disappear from normal space. The Enterprise manages to get to the planet that it was trying to defend while all of this is going on. They manage to just barely fight off the Borg at the loss of only one ship out of three. The other one's heavily damaged, and of course, the Enterprise being made of plot armor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All good to go. They scan the wreckage of the ship and find traces of cerulean gas, which can only be manufactured in one place that is nearby, which is the Azure Nebula, which we've seen referenced a couple of times in the actual show, but just pretty much big blue, pretty cloud. Sure, sure. Yeah. So they decide it's better than nothing. Let's set a course and go take a look. The Enterprise ends up getting there after only a couple of hours, and once they arrive, they come out inside of a subspace jamming field, which, among other things, prevents the sensors from picking up much useful information and leaves them pretty much blind. Uh, At this point, the Aventine pops back in normal space. They end up reaching the ship that had run away from their shuttle bay. An away team is sent aboard. They find out that the alien on board is from a race called the Kaliar. And just after the guy admits that he's the reason the Columbia is in the Gamma Quadrant, of course he dies. Mysterious circumstances and all. But there's not a lot of time to investigate because as it so turns out, this particular subspace rift spat them out into the very same nebula that Picard was going to investigate and the away team is called back to answer a distress call from none other than the Starship Enterprise. Convenient. And at that point is where the first novel of the Destiny trilogy ends. Holy cow, that was just the first book. That was just the first book. How many are in the series? There are three books total in the main series. Uh, the part that I just described at the beginning with the USS Einstein is spun off from a Voyager novel. Uh, the chase afterward is in a novel called Gods of Night. 
which is just solely Next Generations, exclusively the Enterprise. And there's also three more books after this that focus on individual places that aren't mentioned. But it's essentially eight books total. Okay. All of them equaling out about 300 to 400 pages. Okay. And if you thought that was action-packed right there for that one book... That was uh, a lot. That was yeah. A lot. I thought that was more than one book. I thought that was a that was That was exclusively one book. But if you or anyone at home thought that one was good, the other two books are nothing compared to... Like, this is nothing compared to those. And... They are really good. And maybe if people like this one, we can probably do another episode yeah. where we go uh, into was, book two. What was the name of this book? Uh, give me a minute to pull it up here on my other Because I'll, I'll include a link to Amazon. I mean, I'm assuming it's still for sale. Yeah, they are pretty hard finds in bookstores. But I imagine that when you have Amazon, it should be pretty easy to get a hold of, if not just a digital copy. Yeah. Uh, the first book in the series is called Star Trek Destiny Gods of Night. Okay. And if you want to catch up at the part where you know with the uh einstein and with everything that goes on there because that's a whole story on of its own i sure. just kind of wanted to give a little recap set the scene a little bit that one is actually a novel greater than the sum i had that one wrong and gods of night is preceded by or followed by two novels called mere mortals and lost souls all of these were published in the year 2008 just before the okay. jj movies yeah like like Literally right. right there. Yeah. Because they were supposed to have a bunch of the TOS cast in there, or at least that's what they wanted to do. But Paramount came back to him and said, yeah, we're about to do something well, with them. Know, what JJ, actually what JJ wanted was all Star Trek pulled from the air. Yeah. He wanted to reboot Star Trek. Yeah. And well, he, uh, didn't, he didn't want it compared to anything else. He didn't want any of the old toys being sold. I am glad they didn't do that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why people hire him for things. Visually, he's got some some stunning like layouts and things. Story wise, he's absolute garbage. 